Okay, let us start. Yeah, so uh, we have seen the definition of an equivalence relation in the class. Yeah, it's a binary relation, which means E is a subset of A cross A, where A is any set. And it is an equivalence relation if, I mean, all of you know this, it is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. One simple relation is the diagonal relation. Yeah, so diagonal relation is denoted delta sub A. Yeah, that is an equivalence relation for any set. Right? So delta sub A is simply the elements on the diagonal. So you can check it is reflexive. Yeah, this uh, an equivalence relation cannot be empty unless the set is empty. Correct? Because these pairs always have to be there. The second and third conditions are conditional. You understand? If A is related to B, then B is related to A. You don't force A to be related to B. However, the first one is forced. For all elements A of capital A, A is related to A. Right? Similarly, third condition is not forced. It's also conditional, if-then type of statement. So, this diagonal relation must be contained within uh, I mean, contained inside any equivalence relation by condition 1. Understood? Yeah, so give me some other examples of equivalence relations. Suppose, uh, let's talk about integers. Do you know any equivalence relation on integers? Ordered by? No, that, that's on pairs of integers. We want something on integers themselves. No, that's on pairs of natural numbers. That's on pairs of natural number. Okay, fine. We'll come back to that perhaps. So on uh, on Z, say A is n equivalent to B if A minus B is a multiple of n. Yeah, I mean, uh, here I am saying fix n, which is a positive number. So, a minus b is a multiple of n. Is this reflexive? Yes, yes a minus a is 0, 0 is a multiple of n. Is it symmetric? Yes. Is it transitive? Yes, so this is an equivalence relation. The equivalence classes are called the modularity classes, right? So the equivalence classes, oh, we haven't yet defined equivalence classes. Let me do that again. So uh, let me see if I have some, some other example written down. Okay, so I will recall something yeah, on n cross n. Yeah, the, we define this to be an equivalence relation. A comma B related to C comma D if A plus D is equal to B plus C is an equivalence relation. Correct? This we have seen already. Then on the class of all sets, tilde like equinumerosity is an equivalence relation right? Because A is equinumerous with A for any set A. If A and B are equinumerous, then so are B and A. If A is equinumerous with B, B is equinumerous with C, then there exists a bijection between from C to A as well. Right? So just the composition. So we have seen all these examples. Even for a construction of rational numbers, we had something. Yeah, some equivalence relations on pairs of integers where the second component is not allowed to be zero. So there are many equivalence relations. In fact, 
I'll give you one more example. Given a surjective function f from a to b, I define a one related f related to a two for a one a two in a if f of a one is equal to <coughs> f of a two okay so this is also an equivalence relation then tilde f is also an equivalence relation observe that a is related to a because f of a is equal to f of a if f of a is equal to f of b then f of b is equal to f of a equality is an equivalence relation right so therefore this is like pulling back equality on b as an equivalence relation what is equality equality is simply the diagonal relation on b diagonal delta b we saw yeah we can pull back an equivalence relation from codomain to domain i'm saying surjective although it's not really necessary understood this is an equivalence relation in fact every equivalence relation gives rise to a surjection okay so this was the fourth example i am going to claim every equivalence relation on a gives a surjective function f uh, every equivalence relation let me label it e then it gives a surjective function f from a to some b for some b that depends on e what is this b it is the set of equivalence classes of e right so let us define that yeah so the equivalence class of a in a is defined as this set all those b's in a such that a a b holds in other words all those b's in a such that the pair a comma b is in that equivalence relation so this is a set obviously we are taking a subset of a capital a and all those elements which are related to a small a so this is a subset okay so this is full stop and define a modulo e to be the collection of all those equivalence classes such that a is in a so i will uh, ask you a simple question yeah for example given <coughs> a equal to 1 2 3 4 yeah and uh, e equal to 1 1 obviously i have to put 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 i don't have any option right then i will add 1 2 2 3 1 3 and then 2 1 3 1 and 3 2 this is an equivalence relation 
yeah so because it's reflexive transitive i closed it under all the properties which are necessary and then this is comma what is a mod e i mean ideally speaking it contains equivalence class of 1 equivalence class of 2 equivalence class of 3 and equivalence class of 4 what is equivalence class of 1 1 2 3 then what is equivalence class of 2 1 2 3 equivalence class of 3 again 1 2 3 so i don't have to write it three times by axiom of extensionality yes extensionality this is precisely just a two element set like this okay it has only two subsets 1 2 3 and 4 and then clearly do we have a function from a to a mod e yeah so uh, and f f e from a to a mod e yeah this is a surjection we can check that where little a maps to the equivalence class of a clearly every element of a mod e is of the form class of a for some a so therefore this map is surjective so yeah i mean this this is also well defined small a maps to class of a so you understand a is four element set in this example and then this is two element set one maps one from a maps to one two three two maps to one two three three maps to one two three four maps to four that is the map so this is called a surjection yeah i mean this is not called a surjection you already know what the surjection is but this surjection if for this particular surjection you do whatever is written in the first line yes because what is the equivalence class of 1 1 1 2 3 equivalence class of 1 look at this definition all those elements which are related so observe here 1 is related to 1 1 is related to 2 1 is related to 3 so therefore which b's can i choose 1 2 and 3 right okay so given this map from a to a mod e if you define this equivalence relation as as it was done in the first line over here you will get back the equivalence relation okay so given given this this particular surjective map what will be the corresponding <coughs> relation tilde f sub e this is f sub e so what will be tilde f sub e well it will be equal to e itself okay so it's a perfect one to one correspondence between equivalence relations and such quotients surjective maps with domain a are called quotients of a however there is a catch it's not a perfect one to one correspondence any questions so far okay let's go ahead so given an equivalence relation e on a and a bijection g from a mod e to b all of you understand a mod e now yeah b is any set and there is a bijection between a mod e and b okay then what can you say about
the relation tilde of with uh, tilde is has a parameter yeah please observe tilde sub f we are defining tilde with respect to a surjective function so i am going to write down the function g composed with f e what can you say about this so let me write it down so you have a then from a there is a surjection f sub e onto a mod e and now there is a bijection g from a mod e to b so now uh, what can what can you say about g composed with f e it is surjective yes it is surjective so for every surjective map we have a tilde relation associated with that map what can you say about that it will be an equivalence relation obviously but which equivalence relation well you only know one equivalence relation to begin with capital e yeah so we have so what is the answer tilde gfe is equal to e okay so let me try to show you why yeah if you are confused so let a1 and a2 be in a then if a1 is related to a2 then what can you say about fe of a1 is equal to fe of a2 and therefore g gfe of a1 is equal to gfe of a2 and therefore a1 is gfe related to a2 and i can also trace it back because g is bijective i can cancel it from this side yeah i can start with this therefore this is true therefore the previous one is true because g is bijective therefore a1 is related to a2 understood so now uh, you understand what i am saying that if i have a quotient i have one map yeah this is one quotient on to b1 and another quotient on to b2 okay this is my g1 this is my g2 then actually both of them will give me the same equivalence relation on a provided there exists a bijection between b1 and b2 so such bijection yeah i mean b1 up to a bijection that is called a quotient quotient is not a single surjective map but it is such equivalence class yeah it's not just this if there exists an h then they both give you the same equivalence relation if there exists a bijection h then the equivalence relation is the same we just proved that okay so a quotient so uh, given surjections g1 from a to b1 and g2 from a to b2 say that g1 is equivalent to g2 if there is h from well i am writing it from b2 to b1 but you can uh, as well write it from b1 to b2 such that h composed with g g2 is equal to g1 then this tilde equivalence classes of surjections with domain 
A are called quotients of A. Yeah, one quotient is not just one map, but it is such equivalence class of maps. Because see, everything is just changing up to bijection. Bijection is renaming. Well, renaming doesn't really affect the structure of the function. Yeah, that's why we are saying this is a quotient. So, if you remember the exercise sheet said that there is a one to one correspondence between equivalence relations and quotients. So, this is what a quotient is. And there is one more thing which is in bijection with equivalence relations that is partitions. Okay, so, a partition yes this is the definition of quotient okay a partition p of a set of a non empty set let's uh, make it non empty a Uh, so, what is a partition? It is a collection of disjoint sets, yes. Is a set P such that union of P is equal to A and for all uh, P1, P2, small P1, P2 in P, P1 intersection P2 is empty. Right? This means that every element of A lies in exactly one element of P. Yeah, that is the partition. So, clearly, A mod E is a partition. of A. Right? So, what we are doing? We are starting with A, we have some elements A1, A2. Suppose A1 is related to A2, A2 is related to A3 and then we put them in the same partition. This one, this element is put in its own partition. So, this is a partition of A. Right? So, this, this simply says that A1 is related to A2, A2 is related to A3 and so on. So, this is a partition. Conversely, given a partition, we can get define an equivalence relation. Yeah? So, given a partition P of A, define A1 P related to A2, if there exists some small p in P such that A1 belongs to P and A2 belongs to small p. So, A1 and A2 are both elements of the same part of the partition. Yeah, so, clearly Yeah, I mean clearly, I am writing clearly because A and A always belong to the same partition. If A and B belong to the same partition, then so do B and A and tra by transitivity. Yeah, everything is perfect. Yeah, so clearly, uh, tilde P is an equivalence relation. And I invite you to prove this next statement that the following sets are in bijection with each other.
the first one is the set of equivalence relations on A uh, for all uh, for any for each set A. Okay, the set of equivalence relations, the set of quotients of A and third one the set of partitions of A. set of partitions of A. So, first of all like why is the collection of equivalence relations on A a set? Every equivalence relation is a subset of A cross A which means it is an element of power set of A cross A and therefore the collection of all equivalence relations is a subset of the power set of A cross A and hence an element of the power set of the power set of A cross A. So, it is actually a set. So, you can check that these three things are in one to one correspondence. This is a lengthy proofs, but, uh, but straightforward. Please make sure you write it by hand. Okay, Let us go back to the first one. Uh, so, here in 2, can you identify, uh, so in 2, Z mod triple N is the ring Z mod NZ. Have you seen this notation? Yeah? Z mod NZ. How many elements does it have? N. N. N not n minus 1. It has n elements and yeah, the, together with a map, from z to z mod nz, what is that map? Well, every integer m maps to the class m plus nz, right? Okay, the equivalence classes here we already know they are called integers. The equivalence classes here, equinumerosity classes and the equivalence classes here, singletons, right? The equivalence classes for this are precisely singletons. So, you look at this uh, definition of a partition. Right, so the partition in that case would be, I mean, I'm just going to use this red color, and over here I'm going to write the corresponding partition is singleton A such that A belongs to A. Correct. Yes. Uh -huh. Second. No, I am saying, uh, no, no, I have said that a quotient is an equivalence class of surjection. Both of them are okay, yeah, but let us let us choose this as the definition, yeah. One surjection and then equivalence class, let us call it the quotient. It does not really matter, yeah. The underlying meaning is still the same for both of them. Okay. Sir, yes. Sir, how did you prove that tilde f is equal to e? Tilde f is equal to e over here. Ah, I proved something more over here. So just take g to be identity and then follow the same proof you will get tilde f is equal to e. That is the definition of f e correct? What is f e? No, 
Yeah, but that will be the conclusion and it goes both ways, right? See, if this happens, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. That is also true. Yeah, actually, I, maybe I should write it down here that uh, these are bi-equivalences, yeah, rep uh, can replace. I said that orally, I did not write that. Can replace therefore by by equivalences and therefore it is true. So, FPA1 is equal to FPA2 implies A1 EA2. Yes, that is the definition of FE. Please check, what is FE? FE of A is precisely the equivalence class. So, two, two elements have same equivalence class if and only if they are related, they are e-related. Okay, so this, these are equivalence <coughs> relations, equivalence relations are very natural in mathematics. Yeah, sometimes you also require your equivalence relations to be compatible with algebraic operations or relations, other relations. Yeah, so then they are called congruence relations. So for example, this particular relation that we had here, yeah, this, this particular map, this is also behaves well with respect to addition. If I take M1 and M2, then the class of M1 plus M2 is also the same as class of M1 plus class of M2 and multiplication of classes also works nicely. So this is actually a congruence relation for the ring structure. Yeah, so equivalence classes, relations satisfying more properties are actually required in algebra, topology and so on. Yeah, those are known as congruence relations. Okay. 